everyone. Thank you for joining me for another Orange Hill Public Library's virtual story time. My name is Miss Shannon and today is a very important day. Today is Orange Shirt Day and that's why I have on my orange shirt. So you're probably wondering what is Orange Shirt Day? Well, Orange Shirt Day is a day that happens every year on September 30th to ensure that we never forget about the residential schools and all of the children that had to go to these schools. So residential schools are not like the schools you go to or maybe your older siblings go to. Uh, we're at, our, at schools here in Orangeville. I know where our teachers treat us kindly and fairly um, and everyone gets taught all kinds of different things. Well, at residential schools, children were forced to go to them and they had to leave their families for a long time to be taken to these schools and they were not treated nicely. They weren't allowed to speak their language. So right now I'm speaking English to all of you and that's the language I use to speak to my family. It's a language I speak to my friends or to all of you at the library. And I don't know another language. So if I was told I couldn't speak English, it would be terrible because then I wouldn't be able to speak. So they had to stop speaking their language. Um, and other mean things happened, like they had to have all of their hair cut off. Um, so it was a very upsetting place for a lot of people and a lot of children and we have this day every year so we can ensure that no child ever has to go to a residential school ever again. And so you don't have to worry because you'll never go to a residential school. You'll always get to go to the school that you go to now. So today we're going to read a story called When We Were Alone. And I'm actually gonna post a link below about a previous story I did about residential schools, where in the beginning I offer a bit more history for the older kids or for the parents um, who might be looking for more in-depth information. And then I share a children's picture book. So today this story is called uh, When We Were Alone by David A. Robertson. And it was illustrated by Julie Flatt. And this story is about a young girl who's gardening with her grandmother and she starts to notice things about her and starts to ask all kinds of questions. Now questions are a great thing and I encourage you to ask lots of questions. So for example, if you saw people wearing these orange shirts and you were wondering why, then you could ask a grown up or ask your caregiver why they're wearing those shirts. Because when we ask questions, we can learn. Okay, so when we were alone. Today I helped my cucum in her flower garden. She always wears colorful clothes. It's like she dresses in rainbows. When she bent down to prune some of the flowers, I couldn't even see her because she blended in with them. She was like a chameleon. Nukum, why do you wear so many colors? I asked. Nukum said, well, no season. And so there are going to be lots of Cree words throughout this story. So Cree is an indigenous language and I'm going to do my best uh, to pronounce them. When I was your age, so this is the grandmother talking, at home in my community, my friends and I wore many different colors. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they gave us different clothes to wear. All the children were dressed the same and our clothes weren't colorful at all. We all mixed together like storm clouds. Why did you have to dress like that? I asked. They didn't like that we wore such beautiful colors, Newcomb said. They wanted us to look like everybody else. Well, that's not very nice. We don't make everyone look like everybody else, do we? But sometimes in the fall, when we were alone and the leaves had turned their warm autumn hues, we would roll around on the ground, we would pile the leaves over the clothes they had given us, and we would be colorful again. And this made us happy. Now, Newcomb said, I always wear the most beautiful colors. After I helped with the flowers, we went over to the back gate. There were vines covering the gate and they reached all the way to the ground. When my cucum turned to fix the latch, I saw that her braid hung almost as low as the vines. It was like she had a tail. Newcomb, why do you wear your, heart, your hair so long? I asked. Newcomb said, well, no see some. When I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I grew our hair long, just like our people have always done. It made us feel strong and proud. 
but at the school I went to, far away from home, they cut off all of our hair. Our strands of hair mixed together on the ground like blades of dead grass. Why did you have to wear your hair like that? I asked. They didn't like that we were proud, Newcomb said. They wanted us to be like everybody else. But sometimes in the spring when we were alone and the grass had grown so long and thick in the field, we would pick the blades from the ground. We would braid them into the short hair they had given us and we would have long hair again. And this made us happy. Now, Newcomb said, I always wear my hair very long. So even though they were in a dark and sad place, they found ways to stay true to who they were, like having their long braided hair. After my kukum had fixed the latch, I followed her to the birdhouse. There was a bird flying through the air like a jingle dress dancer. She fed the bird and whispered, Napanasis, Michiso, Tamasikatian, Tamaskayasian. And her words sounded just like a poem. And that means, here little bird, eat so you will get big and strong. Nukum, why do you speak in Cree? I asked. Nukum said, well, no see some. And there you can see the Cree words. When I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I always spoke our language. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us speak our words. All the children used their strange words and we didn't understand them at all. Our voices blended together like a flock of crows. Why did you have to talk in the language? I asked, in their language. They didn't like that we spoke our language, Newcomb said. They wanted us to talk like everybody else. But sometimes in the summer when we were alone and our teachers weren't anywhere around the place we were, we would whisper to each other in Cree. We would say all the words we weren't allowed to say so that we wouldn't forget them. And this made us happy. Now, Newcomb said, I always speak my language. After our gardening work was done, I sat with my Kukum in her backyard. Her brother came over and sat with us. He comes over all the time. We drank tea and ate bannock. The tea was hot and sweet and the bannock was moist and warm and melted in my mouth. My Kukum and my uncle talked and laughed like children. Nukum, why do you and Nukimis always spend time together? I asked. Nukum said, well, no see some. Why do you think they spend time together? Oh, maybe because they didn't get to see each other a lot, right? When they went to the, those residential schools. When we were your age, at home in our community, being with family was the most important thing. We played with each other, did chores together, and shared everything. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us be together. My brother and I were separated like day and night. Why were you and Nokomis separated? I asked. They didn't like when we were with family, Newcomb said, because when we were together, we thought too much of home. Now that would be awful to have to be separated from your loved ones, wouldn't it? But sometimes in the winter when we were alone and we were sure that nobody could see us, we would find each other. We would take off our mitts and in the crisp cold air, we would hold hands so that we could be with each, with each other. And this made us, how do you think it made them feel when they could get together and hold hands together? Right, it made them happy. Now, Newcomb said, as she reached over and held my uncle's hand and mine, I am always with my family. The end. So that's a story that shows what it was like for children to go to these residential schools, but it also shows how strong and resilient those children were and how they found little ways to keep their family and their culture um, close to them and their language close to them so that they didn't lose their language. 
So before I let you all go, I would just like to encourage you all to visit the medicine garden that we have here in Orangeville. So it's located in uh, Bravery Park, which is right behind the Alder Street Recreation Center, right behind the BMX Park. And the Mino Kamik Medicine Wheel Garden was created by our local Indigenous group, the Dufferin County Cultural Resource Circle. So they worked really hard with all kinds of people in the community to build this beautiful and sacred space for all of us to enjoy. So there you'll find sacred plants and you'll also be able to learn a little bit about Indigenous uh, culture as you walk through the garden. And the name of the garden, Mino Kamik, means the good earth one gets in the spring. So if you want to learn more about Indigenous peoples in our community, you can reach out to the Dufferin County Cultural Resource Circle, or you can go through for a walk through the Medicine Garden, or of course you can ask a librarian here at the Orangeville Public Library to help you find more books to learn not only about the residential schools, but also all about Indigenous peoples and history and culture. So thank you for joining me today, and I hope I'll see you at my next virtual story time. Goodbye.